There's no question that the country is in the midst of an ep addiction epidemic, but what can be done to help is more widely debated. One controversial option, overdose prevention sites, places people can go to to use drugs surrounded by counselors and medical professionals. The idea is that the user is in a safe space and more open to treat treatment resources. We spoke with Glenn Simpson, who's a certified alcohol and drug counselor, and Jesse Harver, who's the founder of Journey House Sober Living, about whether these sites seem to work and why they feel Portland, Maine should be the first city in America to have one backed by the state. It's about much more than just the using of the drug. You know, mm -hmm. it's about actively sort of retain, um, engaging somebody into services that, that would um, support them in achieving health and wellness. Right now, there are no real supported sites in the U.S. And Glenn, you were just telling me that this is something you've only just recently come around to, even though you've been sort of in this world for many years. I've been around the, you know, recovery community for, oh, nearly 20 years, um, working in the field for a while now. And it seems on the surface something that's that's counterproductive. It's, it's, it seems like a sort of paradox of why give folks a safe place to use drugs? How, how does that equate into, into treatment or recovery? There's decades of research that's been done in 11 different countries, uh, 100 sites around the world, that this helps lead to treatment, to recovery. At a, at a place in, in Vancouver, uh, folks entering detox or treatment, it was up 35% compared to folks who didn't access the particular site. And why is that? Well, I think part of it has to do with sort of pushing back against the stigma and shame of, of what it means to, to live with a substance use disorder. Mm -hmm. I might also say one of, the, one of the reasons you see treatment rates being higher among people who have access to a place like this is because if somebody's using a loan outside in an alley, when they hit that rock bottom that people talk about, who, who's there to help them? Mm -hmm. There's nobody there. But if they're using in the midst of professionals and there's information there and there's services ready to go, then when they do hit their personal rock bottom, they can get those services immediately. There is absolutely an epidemic right now. According to Maine's Attorney General's office, 418 Mainers died in 2017. We're talking about nationwide 71,000 people dying in 2017 mm -hmm. and that's more than U.S. military members in the Vietnam War. This mm -hmm. is staggering. What are some of the most common misconceptions about addiction, Jesse? So, some of the most common misconceptions are that the person uh, can help it or the person can, should, should just be able to stop. Um, really, it's, it's obviously not, not that easy. One misconception that it is not a legitimate medical, medical condition. It is, and it's recognized that way by um, all the largest um, bodies of physicians uh, in the country and in the world. Um, an unfortunate uh, misconception is that it's, you know, uh, not treatable or that it has to be fatal. Some people, some people say awful things, you know, about um, people with this condition that they just deserve to die or they're going to they're going to die anyway. When in fact we know that's not true. Treatment works. Prevention is effective. Harm reduction saves lives, uh, and we need all all of those. You know, we need treatment. We need medication. We need people to have primary care doctors and counselors, um, especially for those who want to stop and they want to stop right now. Um, um, but for people who don't want to stop, or maybe they do want to stop, but they can't get access to treatment because they don't have insurance or there's not enough beds, that's when harm reduction is extremely important. Such things as, you know, um, uh, overdose prevention sites, Narcan, Good Samaritan 911 laws, things that will encourage um, people to, to reduce the harms that they face when they use drugs. Mm -hmm. That all obviously costs money. Glenn, what do you need from the state, from the federal government? Well, first thing that we need is to is to sit down and have a conversation. You know, at Dignity for Opiate Users, where uh, where I'm an advocate, you know, we we aim to communicate with people, not just communicate with the with the person that's suffering from a substance use disorder or the family, but also communicate with politicians and the public in order to educate. Uh, this is what addiction looks like. This is what a substance use disorder looks like. This is what treatment looks like. These are some options that's, that are out there. And then we urge the community to come together and participate. That word epidemic is thrown around a lot in this country, in this state, and in this community. It's beyond e epidemic. What we have going on in our community is a public health crisis, one that we've never seen before, or I don't know if we'll see one like it again. 
Simpson and Harvey, by the way, backed a movement during the first Friday Art Walk in Portland. Their goal was to have 57 people lie down in front of the steps of Portland City Hall for what they called a die-in. It represented the number of people who overdosed in Portland alone just in 2017. 57 people in the city of Portland. Oh my goodness. Yeah. There is more to our show coming right up after this.